one of your mentors was he your significant, most significant mentor was Elliot Soloway, who's sort of a good cool. man. But did you know him as an educator or as a computer guy or? I knew him as a computer guy. So I took my first class with Elliot Soloway. Um, it was my junior year. And it was make an app. So it was like make an app class. So like just figure out what you want to build, make the pitch, then build the app, and then you know demo it at the end of the semester. So the IBM PC was in the world by this time? The Mac was IBM there. was in the world and actually did the class project for that on the, on the PC at that point. Yeah. Uh, t tell us a little bit, I mean, Softway is an important guy in terms sure. of education and computing. So he worked, uh, so he was out of Yale. So Solomon went to Yale and he was under, um, the, I can't remember his professor now. Um, but it was all about education and computing, how to get educate, uh, computers into education and to take you know, uh, pedagogy into the digital world, right? And he started very, very early days of working with high schools and younger, uh, younger kids to try to see how these tools could be used to help them further their education. And he worked on it for decades. He still works on it today, right? So probably 50 years now he's been in the field. And he was doing all kinds of fundamental research with his team at University of Michigan, but at the same time, he taught the one class, which was this kind of introductory to application programming and kind of what it takes to work as a team to build programs. So we did the you know um, Mythical Man Month. We would read the you know Brooks book Mythical Man Month, and he would do certain things about the software process, not just about the actual you know, the, the, the coding piece. And while you were an undergraduate, the Mac came out. Yes. And so it's a computer, but... No, no, the Mac came out, not when I was an undergraduate, the Mac came out when so I was in high school. High school, okay. It was a wonderful tool for making fake IDs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. We made fake IDs. It was great because you had a laser writer, right? And you could make, and I, so I had a business making fake IDs on a laser writer. So it was, it was very highly profitable. But you knew about it as a party. Did you also know about the team? How much? How soon did you learn about the team that had built the Mac? I mean, that, I knew that about it like. Well, look, we all sat and waited for the commercial, the 1984 commercial, to come out, right? Because, and I was also like, I had, I already had my Apple II, and then the two plus came, and then the two E came, and I'm like, I can't afford all these things. It was like driving me, driving me nuts, right? And then I'm like, what's this Mac thing? You know? And um, and so the Mac came, and I just couldn't afford yet another Mac. But luckily, our high school in Texas, we had this lab of we had this huge lab of I can't remember, but they were some kind of crazy PC clone. And then they had a, like four Macs. Never used the PC clones. We did Pascal on that, but we did we did that um, we did the uh, we did the Mac. Did you, I mean, you made it all the way through college. You didn't bail. You didn't, like, drop out. I almost you. bailed. To do and it was thanks to Elliot Sullivan. So when Elliot, at the end of the class, you know, after that, I said, I want to do this stuff, and I showed it to him. And he was like, this is great, blah, 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 you know, we got whatever grade we got. Then I go, look, I got this idea. I want to do this. And it was all about multimedia. Because I had watched where Andy Hertzfeld went to Radius and they were having the Radius cards and all this stuff. And I'm like, send me to Silicon Valley, Elliot. I'm going to learn about multimedia and I'm going to come back and build a multimedia lab for you. And he's like, what? I'm like, yeah, multimedia, because that's what the kids are going to need, because they're going to want graphics and sound. And it's going to be engaging for education and video. And he's like, and that was when the earliest days of QuickTime, right? And I'm like, because this was 89. He's like, sure. Okay, whatever. I don't know what this kid wants, but go. So I get on a plane and I come over here and I go meet with Radius and Raster Ops and You're I go get free cards and like random. wheel of dealing and I'm like okay, and then I come back and I build a lab and we 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 created a you know kind of early computer vision lab with graphics and we had SGI machines and we were doing VR in '88. Like we made, we took the Nintendo Power Glove and we were moving stuff around and I put LEDs on a glove and like with the SGI. So we had this kind of multimedia lab, one of the first ones at the University of Michigan. Did you know you ultimately wanted to get to the Valley though at that point? At what point did you decide that Silicon Valley was the place to be? That is a great question. Besides Apple being here and everything else, the thing that sold me 
I'm so I'm driving around, and I'm like, I heard about this thing called frauds. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and then there was a weird stuff warehouse across the street. Uh, Hall Tech was Hall Tech in Hall Tech, <laughs> and I'm like, let's go and look at this. And I go in, and I'm like. You gotta be kidding me! It was just like a grocery store of chips, and I'm like, there's nothing like this in Michigan. And I'm walking the aisles, and it was like a superstore. And I go across the street, and I can get all this other stuff, and I can make and mix and match. And I'm like, Utopia! I have found it. And it, ever since then, I was like, I gotta be here. I gotta be here. So, you're, this is computer engineering. So in, in, in Isaacson's book on Steve Jobs, he refers to you as a brash entrepreneurial programmer. And I thought, what's that? I never really, that's not the way I thought of you. Where did you get that? Well, I think, you know, I kind of, I'm, I'm an ask forgiveness, fast for forgiveness instead of permission kind of guy. Like, it's just like, I'm gonna do it, like, make it happen. So when I was at, and there's Mark Perrat right there, hi Mark. When I was at General Magic, you know, the very first, like, Second month, the, my boss's boss goes, he's an over-exuberant youth. I don't know what to do with this kid. Like, I just wouldn't follow any rules. Well, dial back. How did you find out about these guys were a seat, these guys were totally stealth. How did you find out about them? The back of Mac Week magazine. You had to read that religiously. Like every week it would come and you would read every single word and learn about every single thing going on in the Mac or in the Apple world through Mac Week Magazine, because there was no internet. So I, I talked to Mark before we started. He said there were lots of kids like you knocking on the door, as it turns out. <laughs> how, 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 did you, how did you get in the door? I guess I was just incredibly crazy and persistent, because I just, you know, one time I showed up at 8 in the morning in, on Mountain View in Castro Street when they were there. You have a college degree at this point, or is this before? Oh, no. I, I was just about to get it. Yeah. I was okay. just about to get it. But I was just on the door and I was like, and I go in and I go in the Castro Street and I look around and there's like no one there. And then I'm walking through and then like, it was clearly someone had been there all night. Like there was somebody there, but they had been there all night. And they looked at me like, ah, who's this guy? I'm like, hey, I'm here and I have my coat on. And they're like, and they're like we're not hiring. Leave us alone, kind of thing. Go away, kid. You know what I mean? And like, and so I was 21 at the time, and so I just kept trying to figure out a way. And then I met a Silicon Valley uh, uh, VC, and I said, "Hey, I need to go and get into General Magic or Apple or somewhere, but I really want to be in General Magic because I know some people at Apple in recruiting. Let me hook you up with them." So at Apple. Even though they were not, Apple was... Well, because there was also Talogen and Kaleida back then. You could have ended up in Kaleida, how would the world... Well, be? I had a job off of Kaleida. <laughs> Thank God, Kaleida into the wall. <laughs> you know? um, it would have been a learning experience. Yeah, oh, it was, you know, so, you know, and, and, and then ultimately they also said, well, we'll also get you hooked up with an interview at General Magic. I was like, yes. And so who interviewed you? Everybody. Okay. So did you meet Andy at that point? And yes. The, the team? Andy, Scott Kinnaster, and David Slew. They were still in they were still in cell at this point. They, they, oh totally yeah. in cell. Totally in cell. So you know I walk in and there's a Neo Geo stand up arcade and I'm like, where am I? And I have a tie and a jacket on, and everyone's like, take that off. You know, and I was like I, I was just I was like vibrant. So what we get you get hired. What do they have you do? Get hired, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> <laughs> but the very first thing, I was the lowest guy in the totem pole. Like, I just came in, I said, I'll do anything. Just give me something. And they're like, here, go make all the diagnostics to, for the new chip that's coming that we're building so that we can know that it works and we can try things for this new chip that was going to power the, the, what became the, the, the general magic magic engine. But they weren't, at that point, they were building a platform, they were building a system, they weren't really building consumer products. No, it was a they platform company. We had models and we had all this stuff, but it was like, we're going to need the big brands of the world to you know, take what we're doing and move it out there. Yeah. And, and one of the things that always struck me is that, um, I don't know at what juncture, but at some point, um, you sat almost back to back with Andy Rubin um, as, as 
to, and I mean, it, it, it's stunning to me because, you know, how many years later, there are sort of two platforms in the world. There's, there's you know, iOS and there's Android. And Android, yeah. And those, sort of the, the scenes of that were in one place, like 20 feet apart, 10 feet apart. Yeah, we, you know, we were literally right there, like, next to each other, pulling pranks on each other, you know, doing all these things. And, you know, if you think about what was done at General Magic, about hardware, software, services, you know, you know, the whole kind of ecosystem that was created. That was a formidable time for all of us who were like 27 and younger. And almost all of our careers were defined by that. And we continue to live by that. And yeah, if you look at the you know, General Magic PDA, you know, Magic Cap device, it was personal intelligent communicator, sorry. Joanna, it's a pig. It was about, we were just too soon. We were 15 years too soon. But we always knew, we knew, we saw that vision and it had to come to life and we just kept working on it, right? Because it was so compelling. It was just, we were just so early. Would you guess that it was going to take 15 years then? How, how out of Jeez, we thought we were going to rule the world in 90 Four, right? So, you know, you know. So to know that it's going to take another, basically, thirteen years after that, you know, and so when I would have never guessed. It. When it fell apart, you were young. This was your sort of first major failure, or, or did it feel like failure? What did it feel like? Oh, it felt like failure. <laughs> you know, when you're working, like you come out of here and you're going to go work with your heroes, and you're honest to God, a you know, hundred to hundred twenty hours a week living there, eating every meal with this family. We were family, right? And we were so convinced, and the world was convinced. And I, I was young, I hadn't seen Silicon Valley failure before, you know, like a lot of other people who were older did, so I just believed it, right? And you're just like, we're gonna make this happen, we're gonna will it into the world. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so, yeah, when it hits the wall, there's a, you know, existential crisis of like, what is, what does my life mean? You know? and, and, and when it fell apart, were you pushed? Did people like get pink slips or did you jump? No, I, I left. Yeah. I left. So it was bad and things would get Well, so we bad. had just gone public. There was all this stuff going on. So, you know, to the outside world, everything was going fine. But on the inside, you could see things were not what we wanted them to be yeah. because we had a bold, bold vision. And we were so far ahead. This is where I learned that you could have bold vision, but you have to also track the societal mindset of the time, and you can just take them just so far. You can't take them so far, like, you know, with the, the mantra around General Magic, right? You know, uh, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And so we were so in the future that everybody thought it was magic, but they didn't know what they needed it for. There was, we couldn't communicate why they needed it. We were like, this is the future. They're like, yeah, good, but I don't need it today. Right? You didn't solve any problem that, we knew they are going to have these problems. They didn't know they had those problems yet. Yeah. Right? So you have to have this advanced technology, but just ahead of where society is, so they can adopt it, and then you leapfrog yourself and pull them forward. But you can't be over here, and then they're like, well, I don't know. Well, you know. So you leave and you take this vision that you've sort of come to be part of this team with you to Phillips, that also is a little bit of a, a wrong turn. Well, Culturally, the Dutch company. Culturally, yes. Culturally, yes. But I give them incredible credit because they were partners at General Magic, right? And so I put together a business plan and a product design, and I said, and I went to the CEO of Phillips at the time, and they go, we should be making this. This is what we should do. And I was 25 years old. He's like, sure, go build that. It's like, Shit, be careful what you ask me. Like, I was just an individual engineer. No one was reporting to me. I didn't have a team. Now I had to build an engineering team at 25. And, you know, and, and then we actually built a device and shipped it two years later. So it got in the market. It got in the market. We won all kinds of critical awards. This was a community. Windows uh, PDA. Uh, what was it? Uh, it was the, 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 the demo. Demo. Put up the slide. Put the slides for the. Yeah, we have it. Uh, so, put up the the so how did it, how did it do? So it was a critical success. We blew everybody in the market of those Windows PDAs at the time. We blew them away. Yeah. And um, so we critically success. But then 
So the first thing was making sure you design a product that the is meeting specific needs that the, the market needs and designing an attractive package and all that stuff. Great, check. We get critical wins, check. But then I forgot the other big thing, which is how are you gonna sell it and market it? Phillips had no clue. They just wanted to sell TVs. So they were counting on the Wintel marketing prowess to sort of tell. They didn't know what they were doing. To draft them. They just didn't know what they were doing. They were just like, oh, like retailers didn't even know where to put these things. They're all, oh, it's a calculator. <laughs> right? Like they just didn't even know because it's it was so still so new. But wasn't Microsoft out pushing those things? Wasn't this a big Microsoft push? It was a big Microsoft push, but the retailers didn't understand because they saw it as a computer product. There were no computer stores anymore, computer land everybody. So everybody didn't know what it was, right? Because the HP had their little like HP computer. So that was where it was, but no one knew how to sell it. It was just a whole new category. There weren't that many new categories being created in retail, yeah. right? Back then, now there are, but back then they didn't know how to adapt. So how long before you decided you had to leave? So I was there, well I was there a total of four years, but I left that group after three years and then went to become a venture capitalist at Phillips on the digital trades, because we were investing in TiVo, so I learned about the investing environment and startups and all those other things.